What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my second channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Tsunade sama the door slamming open put a pause on the chaos in the room Sakura and Naruto the latter strangling the former to keep him from talking back to the Okage both froze terrible news the shinobi from deciphering ran to Tsunade and handed her a document now what is it Tsunade asked in annoyance having already been pretty pissed about Naruto's immaturity and emergency dispatch the shinobi informed her from Tsuna Naruto stopped struggling against Sakura and stood up listening in completely. Still Suna he asked a hint of concern in his voice Tsunade scanned the document her eyes scrutinizing what that can't be Iroka who leaned near her to read what was written said no way shiz and whispered in horror from behind her w what is it Naruto stepped forward what's happened it's the Kazakage of Suna Tsunade explained it seems he's been taken prisoner by the Akatsuki the three members of team Kakashi tensed each having their own reaction to the news you mean Gara Naruto didn't ask so they're back again his fist clenched we've been studying them Tsunade explained we know more about the Akatsuki than any other village therefore Sunagakure has officially requested our help Shizen looked at her like she was mad you're not suggesting that team Kakashi this is urgent Tsunade cut her assistance attempt at arguing I haven't time to form another team and besides she looked at Kakashi we have someone here who's actually fought the Akatsuki yes but Shizen was clearly not comfortable with the idea of sending the team just like that even so alright Tsunade ignored her team Kakashi I'm assigning you a new mission she looked at them with all the Hokage authority she could summon you to go to Sunagakure at once find out what's going on there and keep us informed you to remain there and follow their orders give them any backup they need right the three of them answered Tsunade then gave them all the other information written on the paper before sending them to pack she watched them leave the room and leaned back on her chair massaging her forehead Tsunade sama shizen turned to her are you sure it's wise to send them alone there who said I'm sending them alone Tsunade raised an eyebrow at her assistant but you said that I didn't have time to assemble a new team Tsunade nodded but luckily I do have one ready she smirked shizen's eyes widened in understanding you don't mean Tsunade nodded and handed her the document I want you to go there now and Give them this she looked straight into Shizen's eyes do not take no for an answer tell them to be ready to leave in half an hour and to wait by the gate understood yes Tsunade sama Shizen bowed and left the room hastily off to wake up an unaware team and drag them into what could potentially be a mess this was already turning into a headache who did you send her a call Tsunade sama Iruka asked curiously a Jonin team ANBU Tsunade laughed oh no she shook her head I don't know exactly what they can do but I promise you we want them on our side hopefully Naruto wouldn't be too upset by this Tsunade thought to herself it is his first mission back after all the frantic knocking on the door woke Boruto up and he grudgingly walked out of his room to see what was happening next to him Sarada and Himawari also stepped out sleepy and disoriented what's going on Boruto Sarada rubbed her eye tiredly I don't know Boruto yawn the knocking still hadn't stopped let me go check walking to the front door of the apartment Boruto looked through the peephole a very nervous looking Shizen stood on the other side of the door her brow furrowed he opened the door and rubbed the back of his head Shizen san he asked what are you doing here so early Tabesa I was sent here by Tsunade sama Shizen explained to him and handed him a document she wants you and the girls to get your gear and prepare for departure in half an hour granny wants us to what Boruto wasn't sure he heard her correctly Looking over the document his eyebrows knitted closer the lower his gaze went until he reached the last line the Kazakage has been kidnapped he asked the Okage's assistant Shizen nodded Tsunade sama is sending team Kakashi to Tsuna right away but wanted me to go get you all as a backup team Boruto stood there at the door in his shorts and t-shirt processing work with his father's younger self on a very dangerous high profile mission if he was asked to do that a few weeks ago he would have laughed in their face but now alright he straightened his back will be there in a bit you will shiz and breathe a breath of relief that's great I'll go and form Tsunade sama right away alright Boruto nodded at her see you in a bit he watched her turn away and closed the door sighing so much for hoping that he could take the day off Oniai chan Himawari walked out of the hallway still rubbing her eyes who was at the door Himawari tell Sarada to pack her mission gear you two Boruto walked by her and patted her head we have a mission we do all tiredness seemed to disappear from Himawari's body once Boruto informed her of that yes now go get ready he opened the door to the bathroom we leave in 10 minutes right Himawari nodded with a serious face and went into her room he heard her inform Sarada of the situation and then the sounds of things being pulled out of drawers and closets indicating they started looking for their gear Boruto leaned against the sink of the bathroom and looked at the 
Mirror breathing deeply he nodded at his reflection right it was time for their first mission and they would not fail okay let's get moving Naruto made sure his backpack was comfortably located on his shoulders be back soon Tsunade sama Sakura smiled confidently at her master we won't let you down she saluted good Tsunade nodded at them a grim looking Iroko was avoiding eye contact pointedly staring at his feet before he caught Naruto's eyes as he tried to smile Naruto good luck thanks Naruto nodded he was going to save Gara. no matter what they started walking away before Jiraiya jumped out of nowhere and stood in their path hey there he smiled at them so off on a mission Naruto he asked him that's right Naruto felt the need to stand firm well good for you Jiraiya said almost absentmindedly but more importantly he looked at Tsunade and walked toward her I got some disturbing news he told her the Kazakage of Suna has been yes I know Tsunade looked annoyed I'm dispatching a team they're just leaving she pointed at team Kakashi Jiraiya turned to as if he was expecting to see someone else but instead the only team there was Naruto's Naruto grinned confidently and nodded Jiraiya looked shocked and horrified at the idea he walked to Tsunade and whispered something in her ear that Naruto couldn't hear clearly Tsunade closed her eyes and whispered something back looking irked Jiraiya didn't seem to like her answer and squinted his eyes saying something back turning to Naruto. He walked fast towards him Naruto he called I want a word with you Naruto from what now walking to the side with Jiraiya he waited to hear what the man had to say listen to me now Jiraiya had a very serious expression on his face you be careful around those Akatsuki you hear they've all been out looking for me right Naruto said angrily well this way they won't have to look very far it's true you've come a long way Naruto Jiraiya's face didn't change but training doesn't mean a thing if you get reckless and blow your cool you still have a bad habit of losing your head even now Naruto clenched his jaw Jiraiya leaned forward and placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder Naruto he looked straight into Naruto's eyes never use that power you know what I'm talking about Naruto looked down not wanting to make eye contact with the sage yeah he said quietly I know he stood there for another moment while Jiraiya walked to Kakashi and told him something Kakashi smiled and nodded as he answered Naruto started walking off before turning back to his team Kakashi Sensei Sakura-chan come on he called them what are we waiting for then he heard a call from behind him sorry we're late Naruto turned around to see three people running up to them one blonde guy and two black haired girl Tsunade turned to them and nodded you're just in time she told them before turning to team Kakashi these will be your escort to Suna and your backup she gestured to the three people on a closer look Naruto recognized the guy and the little girl from Ichirakus and the shorter girl next to him he bumped into her Sarada saying you're coming to Sakura asked the girl in glasses Sarada nodded pushing her glasses up her nose she had a red Kanoha forehead protector and wore a simple sleeveless red vest and black shorts with a kunai holster the girl next to her wore a yellow hoodie and long baggy pants her orange headband tied loosely to her neck the guy wore an open black jacket with blue stripes on the sleeves as well as baggy pants like his sister his black forehead protector was tied to his head accentuating his scar they all looked mission ready and serious team Kakashi Sanade looked at them meet Baruto Himawari and Sarada I picked them to go with you myself she turned to Baruto listen to what Kakashi says you're there is the backup not the main assault team Baruto nodded his head lifting yes Hokage-sama Tsunade blinked in surprise but smiled tightly at him she turned to Sarada remember what I taught you she told her yes Tsunade-sama Sarada answered with the same tone as Baruto Tsunade nodded one final time then go ahead she told them all complete the mission right they all answered as one Naruto went back to walking the others following his swiftly the route to Suna Wood take three days but he planned on getting there even faster Gara was waiting for him just as Himawari was about to join the group Jiraiya blocked her Himawari Chan he looked at the girl can I count on you to take care of him for me Himawari looked up at him and smiled of course she said with determination I promise I'll protect them all good Jiraiya smiled at her good luck then Himawari smiled at him and Tsunade one last time before running after the others if Jiraiya had known then what would happened to her during the mission perhaps he wouldn't have allowed her to run off like that perhaps instead he would have stopped her from even leaving the village but alas even he could not predict the future Naruto hurried ahead again Naruto Sakura jumped to the next branch I know you're in a hurry but quit breaking formation I know but Naruto turned his head to look at her don't lose your cool Kakashi lecture Jiraiya sama taught you better than that didn't he Sakura saw that Naruto was glaring at their former sensei from the corner of his eye and side oh boy next to her Baruto jumped from a branch and landed in her and Kakashi's line isn't he supposed to be in line with us he asked her watching Naruto yeah Sakura jumped to the next branch supposed to be is the keyword Baruto chuckled he must really be worried about the Kazakage he said his lone eye tracking Naruto's back he is Sakura said but I wish he'd try to stay calm at this rate he'll exhaust himself before our first 
break Onii chan Himawari appeared from Kakashi's side leaning forward to speak with her brother How long until we'll be in Suna about three days Kakashi answered in Baruto's stead that is if Naruto over there doesn't tire himself out and slow us down Himawari nodded and turned her gaze back to the trees ahead on the next branch instead of jumping off it she used chakra directed to her feet to climb up the trunk a bit and push herself off there shooting herself ahead with enhanced strength far Enough so she could catch up with Naruto looks like we have two whiskered people who like to break formations Kakashi stated dryly Baruto watched his sister in concern for a moment before sighing she's just worried about Naruto he said getting weird looks from the both of them because you said he's pushing himself too hard she's going to check on him to see if she can't help him calm down he explained quickly how do you know Sakura? asked even though she worked with Sarada for a couple of weeks. Already the siblings who lived with the bespectacled girl were very much a mystery to her because that's who she is Baruto shrugged and used a kunai to cut a small branch away from his face before he collided with it there's someone else here Sarada informed them from her place at the end of the formation to your right 7 o'clock Sakura glanced down noticing someone familiar walking the dirt path Tamari she called out to the fan wielding girl Tamari turned to face them all as they landed on the path we're doing here she asked them suspicious did something happen you don't know yet Sakura asked her we got a message from Suna the Akatsuki infiltrated the village and have taken the Kazakage with them Gara Tamari called out in shock you mean he's been Kakashi nodded silently confirming her fear Tamari looked away biting her lip we're two and a half days out from Suna Kakashi said we should hurry right Tamari nodded firmly and jumped up the rest of the team following hopefully They'd get there on time the moon was already making its way to the middle of the sky and they were still jumping between branches Naruto soaring ahead of them all Himawari was thankful that all of her training with Niji had helped her get accustomed to using her endurance in a way to not get tired just channel bits of her chakra every 10 minutes to her limbs lungs brain and heart it strengthens the organs and helped her move forward she could almost feel the distress emitting from Naruto and she knew her brother could too Naruto will you come on already Sakura asked him from behind Himawari stop getting ahead of us I can't take this anymore Naruto yelled angrily and startled Himawari who was just behind him I know why they're after Gara and me Naruto said and Himawari suddenly felt like an intruder to a private moment it's not like it's a mystery or anything without turning he directed his words to Sakura you know too don't you Sakura-chan they continued to move in silence before. Naruto spoke again there's no point in hiding it he said the spirit of the QB is sealed away inside of me Himawari averted her eyes from him and turned to look at her brother Baruto had a hard to read expression but she was almost sure he was sad in their time their father having Kurama inside of him was a reason for many civilians to sleep soundly at night there were so many times he had saved the village. Using the power of the QB the fox spirit had been named a hero not a monster but in. This time people still treated Naruto badly for having the spirit in him and as much as she didn't like it Himawari knew there wasn't much she could do to help only hope that eventually people will realize that there is nothing to be afraid of Gara and I are the same Naruto grabbed the front of his jacket as if his heart was hurting we both have monsters locked up inside of us that's what these bastards are after he stepped on a branch with so much force it broke under his feet Himawari had to make sure to be careful and not let her emotions get the best of her and cause her to destroy a tree or two by accident that's the worst part about this Naruto yelled to them we're just monsters all those bastards see is the means to an end Himawari turned her face away from the group so they won't see the tears welling up in her eyes she could feel the hurt in her young father's voice all she wanted to do was hug him and promise him it's going to be okay but instead all she could do was silently wipe her tears in silence and hope that nobody saw everything about us was exactly the same Naruto said sadly the tails of his headband moving in the wind and he had to fend for himself a lot longer than I ever did and now Naruto crushed the branch underneath his feet as he pushed himself off again and now he's a target of the Akatsuki one more thing we have in common the tears in Himawari's eyes flew freely into the night as they met with the wind hitting her face she just hoped that if someone saw them they'd think it's sweat why should his life be so full of misery all the time Naruto asked the wind why is it always him but no one answered that's why I gotta hurry he explained I don't have a second to waste he jumped to a low branch and launched himself into the air this time is gonna be different I'm gonna be there to save him a drop of water hit him Awari's face. But she was pretty sure it was not her own tear looking ahead there was only one conclusion she looked at the blonde in front of her who was hiding his tears just like her a sudden shattering sound made them all look back only to see that on his jump Baruto used enough chakra to make the branch he stepped on disconnect from the tree and fall to the ground Baruto Serrata looked at him in concern are you okay I'm fine Baruto shook his head just a bit tired that's all her brother was so upset he 
accidentally broke a thick branch with his seams Himawari wasn't the only one who was struggling to keep her emotions in check it was early morning yet Sarada still felt energized the headaches that had plagued her for the last couple of weeks had become so frequent she could now even predict when they'd happen she still had three more hours before another one occurred so she needed to keep up her strength to be able to heal herself right away when it happened Sakura-san she called to the pink. Haired medic do you have any soldier pills on you by any chance Sakura looked at her yeah I have some she opened a small pocket and took out two here you go she placed one in Sarada's hand and took the other one herself you know these soldier pills are only for emergencies Kakashi informed them mildly concerned and girls at your age should especially be careful with the high fat both Sarada and Sakura glared at him before jumping ahead she liked Kakashi she really did but sometimes he said things that made her want to punch him ever heard of sexual harassment Naruto Sakura moved closer to the blonde so tell me you've met him before haven't you huh Naruto clearly didn't know who Sakura was referring to Itachi Uchiha Sakura clarified in Sarada inwardly whence she forgot that to them Itachi was a dangerous and evil individual he's after you now isn't he Naruto stared at her dumbfounded and she frowned at him you know it's not like I spent my time just training this past two and a Half years she said I snuck into Tsunade-sama's library and snuck out of the village as much as I could and now the one thing that bothered me more than anything else has become a reality her gaze became distant for a few moments is she thinking about Papa Serato wondered the person that Sasuke wanted to kill it was his older brother Itachi wasn't it Sakura asked Naruto a member of the Akatsuki Serata, gasped and felt like someone punched her in the gut Papa wanted to kill Itachi knees in it didn't make sense from all that her father had told her about her uncle he always made sure to describe him as a wonderful and kind person not someone he'd want to kill what did he tell her that time she asked how Itachi had died I made a mistake she felt like the world has stopped moving and everything around her blurred away he couldn't have did he why would he do that why praise the person you wanted to kill nothing made sense the pressure she had learned to associate with her headaches had appeared behind her eyes throbbing and making her dizzy Sarada Baruto jumped to the branch next to her are you okay I am fine she barely managed to utter the pain and her eyes grew stronger it's just a headache I'll be alright Baruto frowned watching her worriedly she focused her chakra on the nerves of her eyes where she felt the most pressure and started the healing process healing herself without the use of the mystic palm was a strange experience and she needed absolute concentration she tried to relax her mind and body leaving it on autopilot come on come on she urged the process slowly the pain subsides but her vision was blurry not understanding why considering she was wearing her glasses Serata turned to Baruto to ask him about only for him to gasp Serata he yelled whispered your eyes what about them she asked confused your Sharingan it's appearing he explained in a hushed tone make it disappear oh she blinked had she accidentally activated her Sharingan focusing for a moment she felt the special chakra that belonged to the Sharingan recede back to her head leaving her eyes inside one thing was for sure the next time she saw Itachi she was going to have a talk with him she didn't notice that while she was having her headache slash panic attack Naruto and Sakura had been discussing something important now she'd never know Naruto stood on the tree branch and watched the forest his mind elsewhere underneath him the rest of the group was resting against the trees the fire they made earlier long gone sunrise was beginning and soon they'd be on their way again on their way to Gara. can't sleep out of nowhere Baruto had appeared on Naruto's branch sitting cross-legged Naruto watched him suspiciously something about Baruto just seemed off he couldn't quite place his finger on it though not really he answered yeah Baruto nodded I guess that would be the case if they took one of your friends from you Naruto looked at Baruto in surprise but he just looked back at him with a small smile I have ears you know I heard you talking about you and the Kazakage oh that means he also heard the part about the QB are you sure you want to be near me he asked Baruto after all I do have the QB in me so Baruto asked him why should that matter Naruto stared at him no one has ever dismissed the fact of the QB so easily don't you get it Naruto from the QB that destroyed Kanoha is inside of me I get it believe me Baruto uncrossed his legs and let them dangle off the branch but that doesn't mean anything it's not like you went around and destroyed the village Naruto blinked well yeah but still it almost sounds like you want me to hate you Baruto told him with a raised eyebrow of course I don't Naruto was getting confused then there's no problem Baruto got up and stood next to Naruto look he said I can't imagine what you've been through all of those years but I don't think it matters people aren't what they seem and you don't really look like a bloodthirsty demon fox to me Tabasa Naruto blinked what did you say he asked Baruto that you don't look like a bloodthirsty demon Baruto half asked no after that Naruto urged what did you say after that oh Baruto chuckled and rubbed the back of his head that verbal tick thingy yeah it happens to me sometimes luckily Hima never had it otherwise mom might have felt left out your mom Naruto asked he realized that he didn't know much about Baruto at all yeah Baruto smiled nostalgically the
best mom in the world and the best cook too he chuckled again just don't tell Hima I said that he whispered Naruto chuckled too surprised at how easy it was for Baruto to cheer him up what about your dad he asked and Baruto froze oh sorry no it's okay Baruto shook his head it's just that dad and I had an odd relationship is all nothing to worry about what was he like Naruto asked curious it wasn't any day he got to speak with others who had lost their parents like he lost as my dad Baruto tilted his head and thought he was absent-minded disorganized a slob on his days off acted like a baby when mom was around used to wear his shoes wrong and was almost always late Naruto winced it sounded like the guy was a piece of work he was the best dad ever Baruto said smiling sadly Naruto blinked and looked at him in surprise but you just said all of his bad qualities Baruto shrugged just because a person has bad qualities doesn't mean there aren't any good ones too and dad as shitty as he was had one of the best qualities a person could have he scratched his neck turning to look Naruto my dad was amazingly strong and it seems like everyone depended on him he was really busy and didn't get to come home a lot oh is that right Naruto tilted his head Baruto's dad started to sound pretty amazing but Baruto unconsciously smiled when he was home I guess he was so exhausted that he became completely useless again and Naruto blinked Baruto really seemed to go back and forth on his opinion about his dad what was that like on Himawari's birthday we got a special cake all ready for her Baruto told him shaking his head with a smile but my dad was so tired he dropped the whole thing before we could eat it Naruto laughed you're right he sounds like a totally useless dad Naruto then figured what he said was insensitive but you know he continued it seems like you enjoy talking about your family a lot Baruto blinked he must have been unaware of the smile on his face even if your dad's like that you don't hate him do you Naruto asked Baruto didn't answer for a few moments a sad smile on his face then he placed for his hands behind his head and nodded no I don't hate him that talk about Baruto's dad made Naruto think about Gara. he was the leader of Suna and if what the report said was true he was only taken because he was also busy protecting his people they depended on Gara like the people of Baruto's village depended on his dad who knows where he was now and what those Akatsuki bastards were doing to him Baruto must have noticed where his thoughts were going because he placed a hesitant hand on Naruto's shoulder and squeezed it he'll be alright he told Naruto firmly you'll save him yeah Naruto nodded thanks Baruto Baruto gave him a short nod and jumped down from the branch landing neatly on his feet and walking over to where Sarada and Himawari slept he ruffled Himawari's hair and whispered something to her and she stirred a little Naruto wondered what their parents were like from the way Baruto talked about his dad Naruto didn't know what to think the guy sounded like a bum and a no good but at the same time he sounded like a hero a sudden flash in his mind caused him to stop two men with white skin and horns floating above him the shorter one smirked an explosion Naruto blinked what was that underneath him Kakashi got up from the tree he was leaning against all right he said break times over Sakura stretched and looked to the sides hey Kakashi sensei where's Naruto right up there Kakashi pointed upwards the sun was finally rising one more day until we reach soon and Naruto thought to himself we have to hurry Naruto stayed unmoving while the others grabbed their stuff and prepared to set out okay Kakashi raised his voice so that Naruto could hear him clearly let's get moving are we going now Himawari rubbed her eyes absent-mindedly as Naruto jumped down and grabbed his backpack yeah Baruto told her as he counted the kanai in his holster and closed it will be there soon I hope so Naruto heard Sarada say I want to check something when we get there you guys ready Kakashi asked them and they nodded as one then let's move out one more day and then they could rescue Gara Tsunade sneezed pretty loudly too rubbing her nose she tried to breathe calmly Tsunade sama are you all right Shizen asked her Worryingly I'm fine Tsunade sighed and leaned on her desk there's a very bad cold going around the village Shizen placed down a teacup and a teapot you really should be careful I will Shizen nodded and left the room leaving Tsunade to wonder if she should go take some cold medicine team Kakashi left two days ago Tsunade read an interesting report without taking in any word from it if all goes well they should be there tomorrow morning reaching for her tea the cup had cracked before she could touch it and her eyes widen that's a bad sign pushing herself from her desk she looked for the lottery ticket she filled out that morning don't tell me placing it on the newspaper next to the winning number written on the page she scanned the numbers group 3 number 117037 the numbers matched I knew it she bit her lip frustrated I won and first prize 2 definitely a bad omen shizen she called for her assistant shizen get in here I hope those kids are fine she thought to herself worryingly is what the mysterious woman said coming true is the first move about to be made they stopped walking once they crossed the forest and reached the desert looking over the dunes of sand all right Naruto groaned we finally reached the desert Baruto scanned the mountains of the waste calculating by this time tomorrow they'd be at Suna meaning the fight will begin soon after he glanced at Himawari and Sarada both of them a bit tired but determined Sunagakure is just up 
Ahead Tamari walked forward and then turned to them it's best if I take the lead from here on out lead on Kakashi nodded they started walking into the desert their feet sinking a little bit into the sand before they lifted them to take another step last time Baruto was in the wind country's deserts he was on a mission with Sarada and Mitsuki to deliver an important artifact to the Suna that felt like a lifetime ago. I'm assigning you essentially the same mission as team Kakashi Tsunade told them. Get to the Sunagakure as fast as possible and provide any support necessary as that clear crystal guy gave her his nice guy thumbs up Lee finished tying his shoes and nodded ready Tsunade sama 1010 adjusted her backpack leave it to us we're on it Niji said good Tsunade nodded with her hands crossed team guy is always ready for action guy said before sneezing you have a cold Tsunade asked with mild concern. No no guy waved her off just my allergies acting up that's all he laughed don't worry. We'll make it to Suna in one day I think we can make it in half a day Sensei Lee told him it will take three days no matter how you slice it Niji told them with a frown yet yeah, 1010 rolled her eyes what's the point of making promises we can't keep how we won't know until we try well we guy didn't let their comments affect him forward everyone with the speed of youth before that Tsunade stopped them Niji may I have a moment with you Niji was surprised but nodded walking to the side with her e could feel the curious gazes of his teammates but choose to ignore them what is it Tsunade sama I just thought I should inform you that I sent Baruto and Himawari on that mission as well she told him and he blinked in surprise I see Niji nodded anything else just make sure you keep an eye on them Tsunade tapped her arm with her finger something tells me this mission is not going to be nearly as easy as I hoped of course Tsunade sama Niji raised his head as long as I'm there no one will lay a Finger on them don't make promises you can't keep kid Tsunade shook her head and started heading back to the group Niji frowned it's not something I can't keep he told her back quietly I intend on making sure that the sandstorm that had begun a few hours after they walked in the desert was still going strong trapping them in the cave longer we got this close to our target and we're just sitting here Naruto complained angrily. I can't stand this waiting he was about to go out of the cave. Before Kakashi stopped him Naruto for the last time relax he told him there's nothing we can do I know but Naruto sounded frustrated just be patient Sakura scolded him would you look at Tamari she's the one who's worried the most Tamari does seem calm Himawari noted as she glanced at the blonde girl the cardinal role of traveling in the desert. If you hit a sandstorm you stay put Tamari recited you lose all your sense of direction in a storm like that Baruto commented making them all look at. Him what he asked confused have you traveled in the desert before Tamari asked him a couple of times yeah Baruto nodded and Himawari noticed her brother was choosing his words carefully running errands for my dad and stuff I see Tamari said relaxing against the cave's wall I'm sorry I don't believe we have been introduced I guess not Baruto chuckled I'm Baruto he slightly bowed with his head Tamari she answered before turning back to Naruto don't worry the sandstorms we get this time of year usually don't last very long Kakashi removed his hand from Naruto's shoulder and the boy looked out to the sandstorm raging out there well Naruto said I just hope you're right a stomach growling broke the silence around the cave Oniai-chan Himawari turned to her brother with a scolding tone if you're hungry you should say so I'm not hungry Baruto protested but then his stomach growled again louder this time Sarada laughed and Himawari sighed going through her bag taking out some dried meat she Gave it to him eat it please Baruto tried to resist her but eventually sighed and took the meat chewing on it are any of you hungry Himawari asked the rest of the group they shook their heads no Sakura said thank you though Himawari san Himawari smiled at her just Himawari is fine she told the pink haired girl Himawari san makes me feel old Baruto chuckled yeah he said while chewing some dried meat we wouldn't want that Himawari blushed Oniai-chan she called out an embarrassment Sarada punched Baruto's head and side idiot Baruto she mumbled out that hurt Sarada Baruto rubbed the place she hit him don't tease Himawari Sarada told him in front of them Tamari chuckled you all seem to have a close relationship she noted do we Baruto asked sulking still rubbing the sore spot on his head you do actually Sakura said like a Family well Baruto and Himawari are siblings Sarada said pointing at Himawari who was checking the contents of her bag and Baruto who was sulking and eating the last of his meal Himawari looked up from her bag and shook her head you're our family too Sarada she told the Uchiha and when we grow up and you and Oniai-chan get married we'll be related for real Baruto choked on the meat and started coughing violently and Sarada blushed 10 shades of red Himawari they both yelled mortified she could tell they were slightly angry so while giggling she moved away from them and sat between Kakashi and Naruto to protect herself the two shinobi must have been surprised she just suddenly sat down between them as they sent her curious looks but she was too busy laughing I'm sorry Oniai-chan Sarada she said eventually having calmed down at last Sarada huffed her cheek still red you have to stop saying stuff like that she told Himawari scoldingly Baruto nodding next to her Hima had to use 
everything she had not to comment on something else giggling again instead her giggling was then stopped by a loud yawn that escaped her mouth are you tired sakura asked her mhm a bit himawari said rubbing her eye you should get some rest while you can baruto told her as only i scanning her features with worry barely rested at all on the breaks okay himawari was tired so she didn't argue leaning against the cave's wall she adjusted herself to get comfortable and closed her eyes the storm Wailing outside reminded her of the storm she used to listen to when she was younger only that then she had her parents there with her without her noticing her head fell down onto Naruto's shoulder making the blonde freeze but before he could say anything she had drifted off to sleep Naruto sat still as Himawari slept on his shoulder it had been around 20 minutes after she fell asleep and he still didn't know what to do at first. He glanced at Baruto and Sarada to ask for assistance but... Those two just shrugged and went back to waiting for the sandstorm to pass as if Himawari falling asleep like that was a common happening afterward he tried to relax and just let her sleep she looked like she was sleeping soundly which was good she must have been really tired Naruto figured another few minutes passed before the sandstorm started to weaken Tamari started moving and getting her stuff together. It's almost over she said we should get going right Naruto was about to stand up when... Himawari squirmed making one of the cutest sleepy sounds he had ever heard um he looked around at his friends silently asking for help what should he do Baruto chuckled and got up walking to them and crouching next to Himawari Hima he nudged her gently it's time to move he told her Himawari still didn't open her eyes making a whining sound and cuddling closer to Naruto the Uzumaki blinked in surprise was his shoulder that comfortable Hima Baruto touched her shoulder come on we need to go no. Himawari mumbled in her sleep turning her body away from Baruto no no she started to squirm more her eyelids moving fast like her eyeballs under them were going all over the place mama she yelled shooting up and panting looking around she probably didn't recognize where she was her eyes were wide and her pupils were dilated Baruto grabbed her shoulders and shushed her remaining calm unlike Naruto who was completely nervous about the Himawari's sudden outburst it's okay Hima Baruto told his sister with a calm tone it was just a dream he said smoothing her hair just a bad dream Himawari's trembling seemed to have calmed and she breathed deep a few times blinking rapidly I, it's okay Baruto removed his hands from her shoulders and handed her the bag we're about to move out the storm stopped all right Himawari drew a shaky breath she looked around and her shoulders relaxed a little more as she recognized the people around her she reached out and took her backpack from Baruto wearing it Slowly okay they all understood Baruto's behavior as a sign to not mention Himawari's outburst it must have been a common thing because Baruto didn't even flinch the whole time they got their things and waited for the last remains of the storm to blow out Kakashi cleared his throat once we get to Suno we're going to have to meet with the council right away and get our instructions he told the team we won't be able to make any moves until we're told. So do you understand Naruto he asked Naruto. Who huffed yeah yeah he said dismissively now let's go already to Bayo and so they began their final steps to Sunagakure and Tagara time skip their arrival at Suna had not been a pleasant one Kankuro Tamari Sakura and Sarada ran into the room and threw their bags to the floor rushing straight to the examination table Kakashi watched them from the threshold trying to give them room to work in when all of a sudden the old woman who was in the room charged at him her fists raised damn you she yelled at him get ready to defend or die before he could react Naruto made a hand seal and created a few clones one of them had stopped the woman's fist while another tried to catch her leg only for her to kick him in the face causing his clone to dispel she jumped away with surprising agility for her age what do you think you're doing attacking Kakashi sensei like that Naruto asked her angrily you wrinkly old prune I haven't forgotten what you did the woman looked at Kakashi with smoldering Anger in her eyes I have waited for this day white fan of Kanoha the day I wreak vengeance on you for what you did to my son and no no Kakashi raised his hands to show he was not armed you see that's enough talk she didn't listen she was about to attack when another old man stood in front of her and raised his hand take a closer look at the man Nechan huh the woman glared at Kakashi who laughed nervously and tried to look as unthreatening as possible there's indeed a resemblance but this one is not the white fan the old man said hello Kakashi waved to the woman besides as you know the white fan of Kanoha died long ago the man continued and Kakashi almost winced remember when you heard the news you wept in frustration because you wouldn't be able to have your vengeance the woman narrowed her eyes at Kakashi examining him isn't that so Nechan oh well she said in a happy old lady voice startling all of them with the sudden change of her demeanor never mind she laughed full heartedly her laugh was cut short however when Kankuro started struggling against the medic sweating profusely here let us take a look at him Sakura said as she tied her hair Sarada nodded and did the same leaning over Kankuro yes please Tamari asked of them not removing her concerned gaze from her brother Sakura turned to the room of people wearing varying expressions of worry and concern while Sarada checked Kankuro's temperature listen it might help if you all clear out and give us some room you got 
it's Sakura-chan Naruto said as they started walking out of the room leaving the two girls with the young man writhing in pain Sakura checked Kankuro's pupils using a small flashlight from her pocket meanwhile Sarada read over the medical chart he was poisoned she informed Sakura it seems he has been in this declining state for almost three full days they gave him sedative Sakura nodded and inserted two fingers into Kankuro's mouth taking out a spit sample what are you one of the medics in the Room tends to where you were Kanai the Kur medical shinobi Sakura answered and Sarada pushed her glasses up her nose checking Kankuro's pulse by placing her head on his bandaged chest and listening to his heartbeat we're definitely dealing with a heavy metal based toxin Sarada informed Sakura the intense rhythmic tapping was one of the things Sarada's mother had taught her to recognize from a young age in hindsight perhaps it was because of what happened to Kankuro that future Sakura was so strict when it came to recognizing poisons clearing her head from those thoughts Sarada focused back on the heartbeat it was too fast for her liking making her frown and concern the kind that destroys muscle tissue Sakura asked her they didn't run into poisons like that too often Sarada nodded it seems so she said as she lifted her head from his chest it's destroying the integrity of the cells you're able to learn all that in one look the medics of Suna sounded shocked but Sarada didn't have time to be proud of herself according to his chart Sarada looked at the clipboard in her hands it seems that the cardiac muscle will be weakened to the point where the heart will collapse and cease functioning altogether it's doubtful we'll be able to come up with an antidote in time what are you saying? Tamari snapped angrily in misplaced panic her brow creased in worry as she stared down the two medics there's nothing you can do Sakura and Sarada looked at her in understanding before looking at each other Sarada had a determined look in her eyes and Sakura nodded we're gonna need a few things and we'll need them quickly she told the medics this is gonna be pretty crude but it's the only option we have Sarada tied her hair up as well adjusting her glasses the medics went to get the things. Sakura wrote down for them while they got ready for the procedure are you ready for this she asked Sarada the girl nodded stretching her arms we can do this Sarada said confidently the medics came back with large pots filled with the medicinal herb water and placed them on either side of Kankuro two next to Sakura two next to Sarada they both placed their hands on the water at the same time preparing to start hold him down and don't let him move Sakura told the other medics firmly this part of the procedure is not going to be easy for him alright Tamari positioned herself near Kankuro's head holding it down while the other medics grabbed his other limbs Sakura and Sarada extracted water bubbles from the pots both of the bubbles glued to their palms they held the substance steadily above his chest ready Sakura asked Sarada ready she answered here goes Sakura inserted the bubble into Kankuro's chest and he started screaming in pain his body thrusting up off the table the medics struggled as they held him down as thrashing making it harder to keep his back pinned to the table Sarada took her cue and inserted another bubble to his abdomen his piercing scream from the intense pain sending chills down their spines he managed to break the medic's hold shooting up into a sitting position you need to hold him down Sarada ordered pushing Kankuro down with her free hand and maintaining the pressure until the medics grabbed him again gotta pour my chakra into his body Sakura tried to concentrate despite the screams of pain she focused past the painful sounds Kankuro couldn't hold in and allowed the bubble to sink into the joint between his shoulder and his arm straight into his heart she could feel how the muscle was slowly weakening Sarada she said warningly to the girl I got it Sarada answered sinking her bubble into his bloodstream purge the toxins from his cells and force it to the surface Sakura tried to picture the toxin floating up and being sucked into the bubble draw it into the bubble and extract it she moved her hand up and pulled out the bubble this time with remnants of the poison in and on the table's other side Sarada did the same but quicker unlike Sakura who was dealing with the delicate heart organ Sarada had to move quickly or the kidneys would have collapsed from the poison she moved her hands in an almost hypnotic way but Sakura didn't look away from her mission what's that Tamari looked at the bubble in Sakura's hand is that the Poison Sakura didn't answer making quick eye contact with Sarada who nodded she counted to three in her hand before completely taking out the bubbles simultaneously with Sarada the moved the bubbles into empty pots and went back to work another Sakura commanded right the medics nodded and replaced the medicinal waters on both sides Sarada was already inserting the bubble again when she froze what is it Sakura stopped her hand before she inserted the bubble on her side the poison Sarada frowned. I can't find it what do you mean you can't find it Tamari asked in a panic it's because it became the thin I can't feel it Sarada explained that's not good Sakura clenched her teeth if it's in his bloodstream it can get to his heart fast I know Sarada nodded if only I could see it she suddenly raised her head as if she had an idea do you have anything Sakura asked her noticing the determined look in her eyes I might Sarada said unconfidently but I need you all to close your eyes what Tamari 
asked her in anger this is no time for jokes it's not a joke Sarada's expression became sure and sure I need you all to close your eyes the medics looked at Sakura waiting to see what she decided Sakura looked at Sarada who gave her a pleading look nodding she closed her eyes she didn't see what happened next but it seemed as though all the others closed their eyes too she heard Sarada breathe deeply before there was a sudden spike of chakra from her it was subtle but Sakura had a feeling she felt it before somewhere opening her eyes to a crack she saw Sarada leaned over Kankaro's body and scan it up close suddenly she stopped over the area just below his ribs and moved her bubble over there Sakura tried to see what Sarada was doing but didn't want to risk opening her eyes more than the tiny crack she already opened Sarada inserted the bubble making Kankaro scream and struggle hold him down she yelled and they all did so with their eyes closed Kankaro continued to scream for a couple of moments before Sarada extracted the bubble again pulling out the poison that got away Sakura sighed in relief once Kankaro stopped struggling and was about to open her eyes completely when she saw it a flash of red in Sarada's eyes okay you can open your eyes now Sarada told them all and Sakura opened her eyes fully still trying to understand what she saw it was probably just Sarada's red glasses reflecting the light in the room it's your turn Sarada told Sakura as she dumped the poison in the bowl Sakura nodded and expelled all thoughts not about her patient away focusing on extracting the rest of the poison they might be able to save him after all Naruto sat outside the room with Kakashi Baruto Himawari and the old people suddenly a question popped in his mind hey Kakashi sensei HM Kakashi hummed while reading his book who the heck is this white fan of Kanoha that got the old lady so angry he asked his sensei got any ideas ah uh, that's a tricky one Kakashi sighed and closed his book how to put it he was well in a word he was my father Kakashi said reluctantly huh Naruto blinked in confusion why you're the the orphan son of the white fan the old lady asked in shock yeah Kakashi rubbed the back of his head who was this white fan guy Himawari asked Baruto both of them sitting on the floor against the wall in front of the bench he was a great shinobi of the village Baruto explained to her their conversation attracting the attention of the four people on the bench he died a long time ago though oh Himawari looked up at Kakashi apologetically sorry Kakashi sensei it's okay Kakashi smiled at her no harm done Himawari nodded and looked at him noticing the book in his hand is that make out tactics she asked him it is Kakashi blinked in surprise do you know it mhm Himawari nodded staring at the cover intensely nobody would tell me what's it about though oh Kakashi coughed well Hima Baruto cut him off abruptly wanna go look for something to eat eh Himawari tilted her head but you ate before we arrived she reminded her brother while he got up I'm hungry again he offered her his hand and helped her get up let's go alright Himawari looked confused Baruto turned to look at Naruto and Kakashi will be back in a bit he told them and Kakashi nodded don't go too far you two Himawari sent one last confused glance at them before Baruto lead her away into the halls next to Naruto Kakashi sighed in relief few the masked jonin said i don't know what i would have done if i had to explain the book to her naruto narrowed his eyes and his sensei you really are a pervert ha huh? sensei sakura moved towards the door opening it to see the small group of ninjas standing outside kakashi asked concerned seeing how tired sakura looked how did it go sakura wiped her forehead sighing in relief she smiled at them we removed most of the poison she told them while sarada wiped her hands with a cloth i believe that Ought to put him out of any immediate danger the rest of the medic side in relief as well Kankaro now laid quietly on the table sleeping more soundly it had been a few hours since she and Sarada started the procedure and it was almost noon now Naruto and Kakashi walked into the room behind her way to go Sakura-chan Naruto praised her she shook her head I couldn't have done it without Sarada-san she turned to the other medic who was untying her hair Sarada smiled at her you didn't need me she said I just helped speed up the process a bit that's all Tamari walked back until she hit the wall and then collapsed against it sinking to the floor she rested a hand on her heart and breathed in and out he's not completely out of the woods yet Sakura said making sure everybody was listening now then we have to quickly put together an antidote for the traces of toxins still remaining in his body I see the shinobi she remembered was Kankaro and Tamari sensei not at anything you need don't Hesitate to ask well Sakura locked eyes with Sarada who was wiping Kankaro's forehead with a damp cloth first I'll need a list of all the medicinal herbs that you have in this village yes at once one of the medics left quickly to retrieve that for her and we should change these bandages for new ones she told the other medic who nodded yes ma'am I'll need an four drip setup stat she pointed on the device in the corner and Sarada nodded I got it she said oh and be sure to set up a small portion of 
the toxin we extracted for examination she told the last medic I'll be needing it later she untied her hair and took off her headband freeing her hair you remind me of the old slug queen Sonati the old woman from before told her isn't it strange you turning up in our village like this well after all Sakura retied her headband Sonate sama is our teacher she gestured at Sarada who was setting up the four both of us and it was by her order that we came here she smiled here's that list of Medicinal herbs one of the medics handed the paper to her good thank you very much she thanked him and looked it over Bakidano a reply from Kanoha the messenger left the scroll in Baki's hands and left thank you Baki scanned the contents before giving it to Kakashi it's from your Hokage Kakashi took it from him and read it from Grandma Sanade Naruto asked what did she say she says that teen guy is on its way here to back us up Kakashi told Naruto Baruto and Himawari Nijinizen's team Himawari Asked eagerly looking up at Kakashi from her spot against the wall Nizan Kakashi wondered yes he nodded handing Naruto the scroll I didn't realize you knew them she doesn't Baruto said from his spot on the bench where he sat with his arms crossed over his chest she only knows Niji he glared at his sister who blinked and then laughed nervously rubbing her neck interesting Kakashi noted to inquire more later in the meantime Naruto laughed cheerfully as he read the scroll I can't wait to see how much they've all changed he looked up from the page I hear even Niji's been made a Joan and clenching his fist Naruto looked up well all right he yelled no sense waiting around for them to get here let's go after the Akatsuki right now he started running down the hall okay but which way are you going Kakashi decided to entertain Naruto do you even know where they are his questions made Naruto stop mid-step behind them Baruto groaned and face bombed while Himawari giggled if you don't mind my asking Kakashi turned to Baki what have been the results so far of the attempts to peruse the Akatsuki Baki turned to look at Kankuro first Kankuro went after them by himself and you see what happened to him Baruto and Himawari walked closer to them all of them looking at the injured Suna Shinobi then we dispatched a tracking unit in pursuit but as of yet we haven't heard back from them he explained and there's another problem Baki continued with the somewhat depressing report we believe that well it Appears that Captain Yura one of our council of advisors has gone missing we don't even know if he's alive so you're saying you've completely lost track of the Akatsuki Kakashi summarized yes Baki said in a gruff voice we have Baki Dano one of the medics has called Baki from the room Kankuro had regained consciousness they all stepped into the room making sure to keep a well enough distance to give Kankuro the space he needed Kankuro are you alright Tamari hovered over her brother her face and Voice filled with concern Tamari Kankuro spoke with a hoarse voice one that hasn't been used in a while you're back already I heard the village was in trouble Tamari mentioned dismissively I'm sorry Kankuro whispered to be such a bother shut up Tamari shushed him don't be ridiculous Kakashi looked at Baki can you lead me to where Kankuro's fight with the Akatsuki took place he asked the man Baki glanced at him with a questioning look and Kakashi explained I'm known for having a pretty good nose for tracking if even the slightest trace of their scent remains on the scene there's no need for that Kankuro stopped Kakashi he tried to get up his arms barely holding his weight where are my puppets I assumed that my puppets were recovered right soon afterward the puppet Kankuro had asked for was gently placed on the floor almost all of it broke into pieces one fought with me Kankuro explained wincing every few seconds with every move he made while the other carried Gara away he looked at Kakashi you might be able to follow Gara's scent, but you can definitely track the one I fought I made sure of it he made some noises of discomfort as he moved to point at the hand of the broken puppet you see he pointed I've got his scent right here the hand broke down revealing a piece of dark cloth the last thing I did was make sure I got a scrap of his clothing Kakashi crouched down and picked up the cloth even in defeat you went down fighting Kakashi commented just what I'd expect from a Suna Shinobi Kankuro smirked before grabbing his bandaged chest and groaning in pain Tamari sprung to his aid Kankuro what is it Kankuro looked away from her at Naruto and Baruto who were standing side by side in front of his bed am I seeing double he asked in confusion because I'm pretty sure there aren't two Naruto Uzumaki no Tamari shook her head only one he came all the way from Kanoha to help us hey there Naruto smiled at Kankuro Kakashi made some quick hand seals and hit the ground Summoning Jutsu out of the cloud of smoke appeared eight dogs with the Kanoa headband tied to them at your service eight ninja hounds hey pack and Naruto greeted the small dog on top of the largest one but his greeting was soon drowned away by an excited squeal from behind him Himawari looked at all the dogs with sparkling eyes running past everyone she knelt down next to the dogs and smiled giving them her hand to smell the largest dog sniffed her for a moment before pushing its head under her hand urging her to pet him Himawari giggled as she hugged his massive body burying her head in its for Kakashi sent a look to Baruto who just shrugged alright alright let's skip the reunion Kakashi tried to ignore the girl currently making the hounds he trained for years into mindless pets who were addicted to belly rubs I need you guys to get on this right away he waved the piece of cloth in his hand in front of the dogs they all turned from Himawari and focused on sniffing the cloth closely 
Find out which way he went okay Kakashi tasked them Kakashi sensei Himawari interrupted him looking up from the dog surrounding her can I go with them Hima Baruto sounded concerned that depends Kakashi said getting up do you have any tracking skills yes I do Himawari said her happy expression turning serious in a blink of an eye. Kakashi nodded alright you can go thank you Himawari smiled she jumped to her feet and turned to her brother giving him a swift hug see you later Oniai-chan hold up Hima it's going to be okay Oniai-chan Himawari reassured him patting his arm be careful Baruto cautioned her pursing his lips worriedly go on then Kakashi ordered them the eight dogs and Himawari moved out their footsteps fading quickly down the hall pack and stayed behind for a moment we'll let you know when we find something he told. Kakashi before moving out as well they won't let us down Naruto said watching them leave if they got Hima with them they'll find the Akatsuki in no time Baruto said confidently though his gaze didn't leave the spot where Himawari stood a moment ago and his brow was furrowed okay Naruto stretched we move out as soon as Pakin and his pack gets back so I say we start getting ready he took a step towards the door prompting Kakashi to grab him by the collar of his jacket not so fast Naruto Kakashi stopped him but before he could say anything else the elderly people who were there before entered the room Kankuro the elder woman said Kankuro looked at them in surprise Chiyosama Ebizosama you're here there's something we must know and only you can tell us Chiyo looked at Kankuro with a grim expression am I correct in thinking that one of your opponents the one you fought was Sasori Kankuro averted his gaze from them looking down instead well speak up Kankuro Ebizo urged him yes Kankuro Side Sasori of the Red Sand he told me so himself Sasori of the Red Sand Hakakashi repeated the vaguely familiar name I get the feeling you know something about these Akatsuki will you tell us it was already nightfall when Sakura and Sarah definitely rushed in with the antidote Sakura immediately poured one for Kankuro and forced him to drink it that's right drink it all once he finished the cup. They waited to see what would happen to him next he breathed in deeply before starting to cough. Violently clearing his throat there Sakura sighed in relief you should be alright now just lay back and rest and don't move around until the numbness passes Baki turned to Naruto all of you are going to need to rest as well after your journey he said we've prepared rooms for you but but we've gotta go after Gara Naruto protested thanks Kakashi said we'll take you up on your offer Naruto turned to complain but Kakashi gave him a hard look we may have to travel far and fast tomorrow he told the blonde Naruto closed his mouth and looked down knowing he can't argue with that okay you win Naruto Kankuro called him Naruto turned to him save my little brother will you don't worry I will Naruto smiled after all I'm gonna be Okage someday and for now the Kazakage can just owe me one Himawari and pack and ran through the forest the scent was leading them to the moon already high in the sky Himawari jumped above the dog who needed to be close to the ground her hair was whipping around her because of the wind getting into her face once in a while but she let it the Akatsuki she was pretty sure she had heard that name before when she was young her grandfather used to tell her stories about when her mother and father were young he might have mentioned them a couple of times too were close pack and informed her she nodded activating her Byakugan now with a full 360 degree view she could see everything in a few miles radius there's a river up ahead she told the hound a few moments Later they arrived at a cliff she landed next to Pakin who sniffed the ground so he said there in their Himawari turned her gaze to the boulder he was looking at it was large and completely blocked out the entrance to the cave behind it when she tried to look beyond it her vision became distorted and her eyes hurt making her wince if we get any closer we might be spotted Pakin caution let's go back then Himawari deactivated her dojitsu and felt the veins near her eyes to reside Pakin nodded and turned back running ahead of her Himawari gave one last look to the ominous looking boulder before heading after the hound something about it just didn't feel right there was a knock on the guy's door so Baruto went to answer it apparently Sarada had something she wanted to talk to him about so they both went out for a bit Naruto watched them speaking outside the building from the window in the room do you think Baruto's worried about Himawari he asked Kakashi it's the older siblings job to worry about their younger siblings Kakashi answered not looking up from his book but Himawari is a kunoichi so I'm sure she'll be fine yeah I guess Naruto nodded as he settled into his bed he stared at the wall for a few moments before turning to Kakashi again when do you think they'll be back Pakin and Himawari Kakashi placed down his book and crossed his arms and thought I don't know hopefully they'd be here by morning Naruto hummed in understanding and went back to staring at the wall Allowing Kakashi to return to his beloved book the door opened and Baruto stepped in taking off his jacket as he walked and throwing it on his bed he untied his headband and threw it on top of the jacket rubbing his forehead hey Baruto Naruto called the other blonde yeah Baruto dropped face down on his bed the mattress making a squeaking sound as the old springs took on the weight of the teen are you worried about Himawari Baruto blinked at Naruto before smiling slightly seeming tired I'm not. 
really worried to be honest Hema's pretty strong and she can take of herself he turned on his back placing his head on the pillow and looking at the ceiling before letting out a chuckle if I was worried about anything it's what will happen to the Akatsuki if they try to fight her is she really strong Naruto asked he couldn't picture the girl being able to take on the Akatsuki when Kakashi himself couldn't oh yeah Baruto chuckled again placing his arms under his head once I accidentally ripped her stuffed bear in half and she got so angry she tried to kill me wait seriously Naruto straightened his back as he stared at Baruto incredulously aha uh -huh, Baruto laughed dad tried to stop her but she knocked him out with one strike Naruto winced out she said in sympathy for the man I think his ego was more bruised to be honest Baruto commented with a fond smirk after all Hima was only 3 years old at the time she was 3 Naruto nearly choked amazing but I guess Baruto said more quietly is Smirk subsiding I am a bit worried about her how come Naruto tilted his head it sounds like she can take care of herself yeah but she's still my little sister and I guess I'll always be a little worried about her Baruto turned on his side to look at Naruto alright you two Kakashi closed his book cutting the conversation we have a long day tomorrow so it's better if you got some sleep now while you can write Naruto said settling back into the bed night Baruto mumbled already deep under the covers Kakashi turned off the light and settled in himself Naruto laid awake thinking about what Boruto said even if Himawari could take care of herself he was still worried about her but why everything around him was white and he couldn't hear anything except the cries of a baby a woman with black hair and a blurry face handed him the crying baby saying something he didn't hear he held the baby in his arms carefully feeling like it was something that could be broken like glass once in his arms the baby had stopped fussing settling into his arms and relaxing it was a baby girl with a tuft of black hair and two whisker marks she was really cute and she slept soundly in his arms he felt his heart expand as he watched her breathe tiny breaths the blankets she was wrapped in rising up and down adorable he smiled holding her closer the movement made her open her eyes for a moment looking at him with two clear blue eyes and giggling the sound so cute he felt his heart explode she then closed her eyes again her head leaning against his chest he felt his breath hitch watching her sleep so soundly and looking safe he wanted to always keep her that way safe and sound protected from anything bad and he knew that as long as he could heal his eyes teared up a little and he smiled the baby in his arms felt like a little angel Naruto's little princess Naruto woke up on the floor having fallen off his bed face first out that hurt my head he rubbed his head sleepily oh Naruto you're up huh Naruto turned to see the talking pug sitting in Kakashi's bed hey Pakken alright Kakashi nodded at the hound better get moving I'll see you around Naruto Pakken jumped off the bed and out of the window Naruto managed to climb up back to his bed and look out the window just in time to see Pakken join up with Himawari who was waiting outside both of them turned away from the inn and headed out to the Entrance of the village he's leaving with Himawari again Naruto asked Kakashi yes his sensei stretched apparently they made quite the team last night so she offered to go with him again wait a second Naruto looked back at Kakashi does this mean we know where the Akatsuki is hiding out yup Kakashi tied his kanai holster to his leg get ready cuz we're moving out Naruto nodded his mood shifting to serious wait he looked around where's Boruto he's already up Kakashi explained he went to greet Himawari earlier seems will be working in conjunction with a team from Suna Kakashi briefed them as soon as they're here we'll head out sorry to keep you waiting Tamari apologized she and a group of four other Suna shinobi looked armed and ready to go if that's everybody Kakashi nodded okay I Naruto stretched there's no time to waste let's get this show on the road wait Baki landed in front of them Tamari you and your group are to stay here and patrol the perimeter are you kidding me or what? Tamari looked incredulous orders from above was Baki's answer if word gets out that the Kasakage is missing our enemies might use this opportunity to launch an attack on the village Baruto watched the fight unfold between the Suna Shinobi but couldn't really pretend he cared his thoughts were preoccupied with Himawari and their conversation. Earlier I'll be fine Oniai-chan she told him as they parted from the hug her engulfed her in a moment earlier in an attempt to assure himself of her safety I know that but the Akatsuki are dangerous Baruto didn't like the fact she needed to leave again so soon she never even slept since they got to Suna she smiled at him taking his hand in hers and squeezing it reassuringly it's just a small mission I'll be back before you know it he hoped she was right because if something were to happen to his sister Baruto are you okay Serata whisper asked him he looked at her and nodded I'm fine just want to get going already the sooner they rescue the Kasakage the sooner he could go check on his sister Naruto and the group now including one old lady stood before the entrance to Suna alright Kakashi said we'll head out on our own then thank you Baki said I'll try to convince the council to change its mind don't worry Tamari looked confident we'll catch up with you ha Naruto broadened his shoulders by the time you can catch up with us we'll already have rescued Gara. we'll see you soon Sakura told her they turned and started running to the desert.
Baruto Naruto and Kakashi on one side Sakura Sarada and Chio on the other they were going after the Kazakage time skip guy and Lee were running ahead as usual doing crazy maneuvers and barely slowing down much to Niji and Tenten's dismay Hey Tenten -ten yelled at them slow down a little we've been going at full speed since we started would it kill us to take a little rest secretly Niji agreed with her those two spandex wearing buffoons he called teammates were not human in his opinion they were beasts 1010 Lee laughed you are really not training hard enough Lee Niji sensed something up ahead they all stopped and landed on a branch waiting to see who'd be coming out of the other side a rustle in the leaves indicated the person was close suddenly two figures landed in front of them a dog wearing the Kanoa headband and Himawari he stared at his niece as she stood there in full mission gear hey guy wait the ninja hound called Niji's former sensei packing guy called and surprise Himawari scanned their faces until her eyes landed on Niji and her face brightened Niji Nizan she called happily and jumped from her branch to his enveloping him in a hug Niji could feel the shocked looks he was receiving from his teammates but tried to ignore them hello Himawari he gently patted her back I didn't expect to see you here she pulled away a bit and grinned showing him the headband tied loosely around her neck proudly look look she said excitedly I'm a shinobi like you now so it appears Niji nodded with a small smile as Baruto here too she shook her head Oni Aichan went with Sarada and the others to find the Kazakage you know this girl Niji 1010 asked him examining Himawari closely Niji sighed and nodded he knew his teammates and they were no doubt going to bombard him with questions yes this is Himawari he introduced her to the others Himawari these are my teammates. Lee gestured to the thick browed team 1010 the weapons expert nodded and Gai Sensei Himawari smiled at them bowing her head slightly it's nice to meet you she said though Niji knew it wasn't her first time meeting any of them after all she came from the future his teammates gazes went back and forth between Niji and Himawari clearly surprised by the familiarity between them and 1010 raised an eyebrow crossing her arms mind telling us how the two of you know each other her tone suggested she was already formulating some theories on the matter none of them something Niji would like to hear of Knowing her he feared those theories of hers were going in the completely wrong direction not particularly he dismissed her faking ignorance and hoping she'd drop it for now never mind this he turned to Himawari you said team Kakashi had gone after the Kazakage Himawari nodded me and Pakin were on our way to find you all and tell you to go there instead go where guy asked Pakin right Pakin cleared his throat Kakashi sent eight of us ninja hounds and Himawari to scour the countryside and try to pick up the Akatsuki organization sent he explained well we soon discovered they were headed for the land of rivers bordering Kanoha and soon the land of rivers Niji asked in confusion that's right Pakin nodded and since your team is on its way from Kanoha to Suna I guess this is your lucky day you're the closest if you can call it lucky alright then they all were ready to move we'll show you the way Himawari smiled at them and jumped to Pakin's branch follow us right guy said Enthusiastically you heard her everybody let's move out what 1010 asked tired already even though she said that she moved after Himawari and the dog like the rest of them jumping through the trees at almost twice the speed as before none of them noticed the figure hiding in the tree behind them a man trapped within a plant who watched and heard everything Naruto lead the others through the forest as they jumped from branches. On their way to their destination Naruto Sakura moved to jump next. To Naruto can I ask you a question Naruto stared at her waiting for her to ask how long do you think the Akatsuki have been after you she asked surprising him I don't know he said not wanting to talk about it two members of the Akatsuki came to Kanoa looking for Naruto once Kakashi recalled but it's been three years since then and no sign of them and now they're back but why do you think they waited so long to make another move Sakura inquired it could be they wanted to act before this but for some reason they couldn't Kakashi offered a reason maybe because Jiraiya Sama was around and they didn't want to face him that's not it Chio said from behind them jumping together with Baruto and Sarada who hadn't spoken since they started moving from what I've learned there was an entirely different reason they had to wait this long what reason Naruto tensed if you're going to try and draw out the biju that dwells within a great deal of preparation is involved they just needed some more time was Chio's gloomy answer what are you talking about Sakura asked her what Biju my my you're a student of that old slug queen Tsunade and you don't even know that Chio sounded bemused when Kanoha itself is host to the QB Naruto's eyes widened slightly and he tensed next to him he could feel Sakura do the same the QB is not something we talk about Kakashi answered in Sakura's stead it's considered top secret really the single word packed a thousand eye rolls within it well not surprising I guess she then went on to explain the biju are demon spirits with one or more tails Suna has had a single biju since long ago that's the Shikaku sealed within Gara. so then Sakura gulped there's more of these demon spirits there are nine biju in total surprisingly it was Baruto who had answered each one of them has 
A different number of tails they all turned to look at him in surprise but he just had an unreadable expression on his face Chio nodded and continued the biju are huge concentrations of chakra and during the great war every nation competed for control of them for military purposes they fought non-stop over them but the biju were too strong Baruto completed the tail no one could control them everybody again looked at him and Naruto frowned isn't Baruto new in their village how do you know that? Chio asked him suspicious my dad he explained without looking up he knew a lot about the Jinchuriki Jinchuriki Naruto wondered what that meant Niji and Himawari ran in the back of the group as they crossed the mountain on their way to the location of the Akatsuki hideout Niji noticed that Himawari yawned every couple of minutes are you tired he asked her worryingly a bit she shook her head I was out all night looking for the hideout you should've stayed in soon and Niji scolded her you're in no shape to be taking on an enemy it's okay Nijinese and Himawari assured him I'm fine what is it packing guy asked the hound up ahead of them someone's coming the pub warned them Niji and Himawari nodded at each other Byakugan he yelled activating his dojitsu Nijinese and Himawari called warningly yes Niji turned around it's behind us they all glanced backward looking for the danger for a moment nothing happened and then boom the ground 10 meters away from them broke in half a large white thing making its way to them at an alarming speed and splitting the ground while doing so Niji stepped in front of Himawari and spread his arms protectively before her the thing hit the rock they stood before exploding it just as they all scattered jumping a safe distance away the large pieces of debris and the dust cloud rising from the explosion scattered quickly revealing a man with blue skin wearing a black cloak with red clouds on it and holding a sword almost bigger than himself Hugai looked closely at the man wait a minute Lee looked at the cloaked person in confusion you know this person guy sensei who are you guy asked the person lowering the tension filling the air to 0% this is going to be a long fight Niji got into position Serata landed on the ground simultaneously with the others and they started running being so close to the hideout everybody stopped Kakashi suddenly yelled sounding panicked everybody came to a halt standing behind him Serata looked over him to the person who stood in their path and gasped it can't be who's that Sakura asked body tense Serato was trembling not from fear but anger she knew what was going to happen yet wished with every fiber of her being that she could have avoided it next to her Naruto growled I know you Niji felt Himawari silently activate her Byakugan behind him also moving into a combat position he just hoped that if his teammates caught sight of that he could explain it in a way that made sense to them without Revealing the truth he scanned the man in front of them unreal he felt shocked his chakra level is off the charts Himawari leaned forward I've never seen anyone but Papa with this much chakra she whispered to him and he nodded your memory is about as bad as your haircut the man with the blue skin told Guy HM Guy's eyes. Whiten can it be that you're you finally remembered have you the man smirk you've met me somewhere before Guy asked him continuing to break the tension it's no wonder you're call the beast the man leaned forward your intelligence is certainly subhuman his smirk got wider well don't worry I'll refresh your memory soon enough Itachi Uchiha Naruto growled and Sarada tense this can't be happening right now she thought miserably on her other side Sakura gasped so that's the one Chio stepped forward the child who wiped out his entire clan the world had stopped for Sarada wiped out her eyes flew to Itachi's who had been looking at them with an almost bored expression are we really going to be enemies only when we're in front of my partner or the shinobi of the village Kakashi San Naruto Kun Itachi spoke it's been a while the coldness of his voice gave Sarada shivers this man couldn't be her uncle the person she met was kind and quiet calm and pleasant not this person who radiated danger I wasn't enough for you Han Naruto stepped forward you had to go after Gara. as well no stop it Sarada didn't want to hear all of this stop talking next to her Baruto noticed her trembling Sarada all of her clan the reason she felt so alone all those years with the surname she didn't understand he was responsible for that but why why did he do that why did he kill their family Naruto pointed at Itachi I'll destroy every last one of you Itachi didn't respond instead he raised his hand slowly Kakashi gasped everyone whatever you do don't look him in the eyes Itachi's Jinjutsu is a visual jutsu the Jonin explained hurriedly which means avoid eye contact with him and his jutsu can't take effect yet that I know Naruto told him but Sarada on the other hand stared right back at Itachi glaring try me if you want okay Sakura said but then how are we supposed to fight him that's the tricky part Kakashi said making Sarada huff unimpressed she had sparred with her father more than once with their Sharingan blazing he didn't go easy on her at all you have to anticipate his moves by watching his feet his body but that's like fighting with one arm tied behind your back Sakura said through gritted teeth I know Sarada felt the urge to say it's frustrating but you get used to it the Uchiha clan at Chio spoke it's been a long time since I've gone up against the Sharingan they all looked at her don't look so surprised I've been around and I know there's more than one way to fight a visual jutsu like that yeah Naruto asked like what then if one against one abandon the field if two against one take the rear and ill yield Chio recited what's that mean? 
the first part of it is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Chio sounded like she wanted to roll her eyes. The Sharingan can never be beaten in single combat, but if you outnumber the Sharingan user, if there's two against one, even if one of you is caught in his Jinjutsu, the other is free to strike from the rear and get the Jinjutsu dispelled. Serata glanced at Itachi, a plan starting to form in her mind. Even if your attack from the rear should fail somehow, you'll still be able to strike your comrade yourself and break the Jinjutsu that way Chio prepared her stance so while one of us fights him face to face as a distraction the rest of us will mount a series of attacks from the rear where his Sharingan can't reach good plan Sakura nodded I guess you learn a lot of stuff if you leave long enough Naruto smiled before turning serious again let's go I'll take the rear weight Sarada spoke up I have a better plan she said causing them all to look at her I'll fight him while the rest of you go on to save the Kazakage, I'm afraid I can't let you take him on by yourself Sarada Kakashi told her he's too dangerous she won't be alone Baruto dropped his back to the ground I'll help her out no way Naruto looked at both of them angrily this is my fight I'm gonna beat that bastard to the ground you need to go save the Kazakage Sarada told him her eyes not leaving Itachi for a second Baruto and I will be fine will buy you time Naruto's right Sakura intervened we have to stop him right now I'm Sorry Sakura-san, but this is not up to debate Sarada looked at Baruto Are you sure you wanna stay here? You're my teammate Baruto loosen his shoulders If you wanna fight an Akatsuki member who's an s rank criminal I'll help you out Kakashi's eyes darted between them and Itachi I'm still not convinced I can leave you two to take care of him easily He told them Itachi uses an advanced version of the Sharingan called Mangekyo Sharingan It's far more powerful than any other Visual Jutsu it only takes a second, but if he hits you with that Jutsu it'll be the longest second you've ever lived time itself gets warped what seems like a second in the real world can be hours or days to some trapped in his Jutsu I once wandered around it for 3 days as I moved to Itachi it's not a Gen Jutsu that can be broken just like that very good Kakashi-san Itachi sounded Impressed I see your time in my Tsukuyami wasn't wasted oh believe me I learned something else as well Kakashi spoke back to him there's a price to pay for that Sharingan and exhausted you didn't it you had to quit before the battle was over what is he talking about Sarada didn't understand so in addition to losing a lot of chakra you risk permanent damage to your eyes every time you use that jutsu don't you Itachi permanent damage Sarada looked at Itachi's eyes Papa never suffered from that so why now with even more questions Sarada knew she had to get the rest of them far from here Kakashi Sensei please she tried to convey her urgency through her voice we can handle this just leave him to us I understand you believe so Sarada but the Mangekyo Sharingan is not to be taken lightly I know all about the Mangekyo Sarada pulled the ends of her headband and tightened it it's not the first time I took it on she knew she shouldn't be telling him that but it was the quickest way to make him understand she took out the pair of black arm warmers she packed and wore them were taking him on and will beat him you've dealt with the Sharingan before Kakashi asked her his voice suspicious I've never seen you before this mission so how did you manage to encounter it I can explain it all later but right now you need to focus on the Kazakage Sarada tried to urge them she needs them away to speak with Itachi will be fine here just go are you absolutely certain you can handle this Kakashi stared at her with his only visible eye she straightened her back and nodded yes sir Kakashi sensei you can't be serious Sakura protested this is the person who tormented Sasuke Kuen we have to stop him I know how you feel Sakura but Sarada and Baruto are right Kakashi sounded reluctant but nodded at the two rescuing the Kazakage is our first priority the mission comes first but Naruto opened his mouth to argue but was stopped by Baruto Naruto he called the blonde when you get there please make sure Himawari is safe Naruto stared at him for a moment before moving to look at Itachi Sarada could almost hear the war going on in the Uzumaki's mind fine Naruto hissed through gritted teeth good Kakashi turned to Sarada we leave him to you don't worry Kakashi sensei Sarada clenched her fists I won't let him get away so easily let's go you two Kakashi ordered Naruto and Sakura the hideout isn't too far from here Naruto and Sakura gave one last death glare in Itachi's direction before nodding won't he follow us Chio asked you don't have to worry about that Chio sama Sarada smirked I have a feeling he's going to be a bit too preoccupied to stop you she turned to Itachi all the anger and confusion in her turning into something else a feeling that could only be resolved by punching something ready Baruto you bet Sarada walked towards Itachi her fist at ready now knowing only her back was visible to her teammates she allowed her eyes to turn red activating her Sharingan go all of you she yelled at them I'll make sure Himawari will be fine Naruto promised Baruto before jumping Away the others following be careful Kakashi warned them both leaving the clearing Itachi Nizan she called him once she was sure they were alone and ran to him her fist ready you when I need to talk it's time she got some answers so he's an Akatsuki Niji understood his need to protect Himawari growing bigger the man with the sword laughed and threw his weapon in the air water style exploding water shock wave get ready guy yelled to his team the Akatsuki bent down and a wave of water came 
pouring out of his mouth endless so much water came it was like he released an entire lake at them leaving only the two small boulders they stood on above surface the man laughed sadistically ready or not here I come he glided down the water. As if they were nothing more than a small hill of sand coming down on them from above on the wave they all jumped up before the water could wash them away landing on the boulders again once the wave was over leaving the land so flooded with water they couldn't see the ground behind them another wave raced this one taller than the last it washed over 1010 and guy who jumped again you guys 1010 called from above look out remember me now the man asked guy washing him over and over with tall waves where in the world is all this water coming from 1010 asked in shock this technique of his requires a huge amount of chakra niji watch the chakra the akatsuki man wasted barely make any lasting effect on his chakra reserves and incredible Amount the man disappeared underwater leaving them to stay on guard Lee leaned forward and looked around where do you think he is another wave broke the surface about to wash over them Guy Sensei Ten Ten Lee yelled to them as they were the closest Niji and Himawari jumped high barely 2 meters above the wave the Akatsuki member stood on the wave making his way to the nonchalantly on the water current he prepared his sword and swung it at Guy who evaded midair and aimed a kick right into the Man's face sending him flying backwards unfortunately the man only splashed and disappeared revealing to be a water clone the real one appeared behind Guy who turned barely in time to avoid another swing of the sword Guy Sensei Lee called out worryingly Guy appeared behind the man distracting him Lee Leaf rising when Lee appeared under the man's sword and kicked upwards causing the sword to fly out of the man's hand what the blue skinned Akatsuki stared in shock at his flying sword underneath. Then the water calmed enough so Niji and Himawari landed on the surface sending Chakra to their feet to stand on the water Himawari Niji called right they both took their stand 8 trigrams. Air palm they yelled sending a gust of wind so powerful it sent the man backwards however the sword had miraculously landed back in the man's hand as a result and he used it to stop his movement but he didn't notice that 1010 had also tied a sharp metal ball with an explosive tag on it to the sword. Exploding just as it got to him the smoke dispersed revealing the man had gotten away where's he hiding this time guy looked out to the seemingly calm water Niji any sign of him 1010 asked in front of us and coming closer Niji didn't move his eyes from the moving target. I have found him Lee declared the man slowly resurfaced barely any of him above water I'll grant you brats this much you're more trouble than I thought you'd be he told them in fact you're incredibly annoying wait a minute the Water Jutsu and the mass of swords guy spoke like he finally recognized the man or you don't tell me your memory is finally stirring in that tiny little brain of yours the man asked him I feel certain we've met before guy mumbled 1010 groaned ugh I think this guy would be pretty memorable listen to that even your own followers are beginning to wonder if you can remember anything the man smirked and lifted his sword well let's see what we can do enough pain and maybe then you'll remember. Sarada Tachi looked at his niece as he evaded her attack you know we cannot speak right now I don't care Sarada swung her chakra enhanced fist and him anger in her eyes is it true did you kill our clan Atachi evaded her again his eyes moving to the young man behind her he stayed fairly hidden in the shadows of the trees but Atachi could tell if he made any sudden movements the teen would attack don't worry about him Sarada noticed where his eyes were aiming a kick at him Barudos with me. Itachi's eyes flicked to her catching her foot and pushing her away making her lose her balance is he a time traveler as well yes that's right Sarada nodded throwing another fist at him her eyes the color of the Sharingan but this is not important right now Itachi knees in the honorific she used made him blink in surprise once again did you kill our clan Itachi closed his eyes sighing yes I did why. Sarada's voice trembled she stood still her body shaking why would you do that it is complicated and the answer might leave you wishing you never knew Itachi wanted to apologize she looked so hurt her eyes brimming with unshed tears then she looked up at him with anger and engaged in a barrage of fists and punches she threw at him all of which he either evaded or blocked she then jumped in the air aiming a kick at his head he caught her leg again and swung her away only for her to hit the ground and dispel the real her appearing behind him and pressing a kunai to his throat even so I deserve to know she yelled and he used that to throw her from her arm over his shoulder to the ground she got up her exposed shoulders dirty and bruised though she didn't seem to care I'm an Uchiha just like you and Papa I deserve to know what happened to my family don't keep me in the dark she ran to him again her fist ready he knew that so far she had been going easy on him not using any lethal force but this time she was mad Shanner she yelled hitting the ground where he stood a second ago and splitting it in half the crack going all the way back to where her friend stood are you sure you want to hear Itachi asked her landing a few feet away from the destruction and wishing she'd say no he wanted to protect her from that knowledge at any cost I do she looked at him with such a serious expression it reminded Itachi of the last time he saw Sasuke she pushed her glasses up her nose her 
cheeks stained with tears of frustration and eyes blazing red I want to know what happened to my family very well Itachi closed his eyes and opened them I'll show you she understood what he was about to do and released her fist staring him in the eye Tsukuyami Sarada's shoulders went limp and she stopped moving her gaze empty Sarada the teen in the shadows moved to them revealing to look almost exactly like Naruto Uzumaki he reached Sarada and checked on her what did you do to her he asked Itachi hostily I put her under a genjutsu to show her why I had to kill the Uchiha clan Itachi explained not missing the protective tone in Baruto's voice are you Naruto Uzumaki's son Baruto blinked but nodded still suspicious of him yeah I am he said so you're Sasuke-san's brother you know Sasuke Itachi asked him interested of course I do he was my master Baruto sounded proud he was the best shinobi I have ever met I see Itachi nodded a bit that's good to know he mentioned you a couple of times now that I think about it Baruto placed his hand on Sarada's shoulder pulling her closer to him always talked about you being a hero it wasn't how it was supposed to be Itachi revealed sadly he was supposed to be the hero not me Sasuke-san is a hero if it makes you feel any better Baruto told him he saved our village well more times than I can count and that's just from when I was born really Itachi's eyes widened slightly Sarada didn't mention that yeah well because Sarada thinks my dad is better Baruto rolled as I don't know how she got to that the old man was useless most of the time she preferred Naruto Itachi frowned a bit why because she wanted to be the Hokage Baruto smiled at the still under Jinjutsu form of his teammate and my old man was the best Hokage the village had ever seen at least in the people's eyes he added quickly Itachi detected a bit of bitterness behind that last comment and you don't see him like that I won't deny he was strong and cared a lot about the village Baruto shrugged but that also meant he neglected his family a lot since he was busy all the time I already forgave him for that but it's not like it doesn't sting to Besa I see Itachi understood now so Naruto Uzumaki had become Okage and Sasuke had become a splendid shinobi who fought for Kanoha he was glad to know Kanoha was left in their trusted hands Sarada stirred in Baruto's arms her eyes fluttering Sarada are you okay Baruto asked her worryingly no she said standing up Shakingly she looked at Itachi tears forming in her eyes I'm not okay Sarada Itachi began you had to endure all of that to carry all of that pain by yourself Sarada's tears were again flowing freely down her cheeks but this time not because of frustration Itachi closed his mouth surprised he didn't expect her to see it from that point of view are you not mad at me he asked her confused do you not hate me now that you know the truth Sarada shook her head taking a wobbly step closer to him Baruto flinched like he had to stop himself from running to her she took another step and then another until she finally stood barely half a meter from him I don't hate you Itachi Nizan she whispered and I know that Papa wouldn't hate you if he knew the truth it's not as simple as you make it out to be Itachi tried to explain I told Sasuke I saw Sarada cut him off and I know Papa he'll never hate his older brother the next thing Itachi knew was that she was hugging him burying her face in his Cloak he blinked surprised Baruto looked amused at his struggle and gestured for him to hug Sarada back Itachi did so patting her back awkwardly he didn't know that being forgiven would feel so nice after all he had resigned himself for the dark path a long time ago and yet with a few words from this girl everything became better Sarada as much as I hate to interrupt this we need to get going soon Baruto said looking at the sky I don't want the others to worry and go back to check on us your right Sarada slowly detached herself from Itachi wiping her tears we should get moving she sent a worried glance at Itachi before that though you need to punch me Baruto told Sarada and throw me around a couple of times if you can Sarada blinked at him how you look like you at least tried to fight someone I don't we need to make it look like we actually fought Itachi san oh Sarada nodded that makes sense she prepared her fist and looked at him ready he nodded do it she punched him in the gut Sending him flying a couple of feet away and into a tree jumping to him she grabbed him by the shirt and flung him into the ground dirtying his clothes with the dust rising for the hit good enough she asked him concerned yup Baruto groaned in pain and pushed himself up this is great sorry Sarada offered him a hand thanks he grabbed her hand and pulled himself up dusting his clothes good job Sarada turned to Itachi who watched the two in wonder it seemed like Baruto had such a trust in Sarada he managed to fight off the primal instinct of protecting himself and allowed her to attack him interesting he thought we need to go Sarada told Itachi looking a little sad he nodded giving her a small encouraging smile go and be careful I will Sarada smiled at him looking confident and strong like an Uchiha I'll see you soon Itachi knees and goodbye Sarada Itachi poked her headband and she smiled happily Baruto handed her her back and they both got ready to move Baruto nodded at Itachi looking ready to storm into battle for the first time Itachi wondered how that boy got his scar they both moved out jumping away into the forest after their comrades thank you Sarada Itachi looked at his niece's moving figure I'm sure Sasuke is very proud of you he then made a hand sign dispelling himself and returning his memories to his original self Niji stood ready Himawari next to him luckily her long hair 
was enough to hide the Byakugan from anyone who wasn't looking at her directly all right time to launch a counterattack. Guy declared let me go against him first as soon as his guard is down you move in yes sir got it yes sensei right are you fool enough to think you can get me to lower my guard that easily the Akatsuki man's permanent smirk grew even wider I won't try to talk you out of it I'll let you learn the hard way he ran towards Guy the same moment Guy jumped to him Niji used that to appear in front of him gentle fist he struck but the Akatsuki blocked him with his sword Lee came from above with his weapons, but the Akatsuki just moved his sword up and broke them sending Lee away the man cackled not noticing Himawari sneaking behind him H.A. she struck his back with her palm but before she could hit him he swung his sword backwards and hit her sending her flying a couple of meters away Himawari Niji called out in concern luckily she landed on her feet quickly. Looking more angry than hurt he has a point Lee said he swings that huge sword with such ease that getting through his guard is impossible if close ranged combat won't work 1010 opened her scroll with a pull releasing Kanaya with explosive tags attached to them at the Akatsuki member he just raised his sword calmly letting the explosives detonated the cloud of black smoke appeared around them, dispersing to reveal that he had not moved an inch away of course guy called out that sword of his ah. Do you remember at last the man turned to him that weapon it's yours isn't it guy pointed at the sword who else's would it be Niji asked ah but there's a difference between knowing and being absolutely certain guy answered wise words guy sensei Lee praised him so simple yet so full of profound meaning I said you had the intelligence of a subhuman beast but a beast could run circles around your brain the man with the sword seemed bored let's go guy jumped in the air dynamic action they started. To spar guy attacking with his taijutsu and the Akatsuki member blocking it with his sword and water jutsu Himawari crept around the fight on her way back to Niji but he signaled her to stop he couldn't risk the man seeing her and attacking suddenly guy had the sword in his legs attack Niji 1010 and Lee jumped on the Akatsuki member he did a hand seal water clone jutsu he yelled creating three more of himself made out of water. Watch out Niji called to his comrades the clones grabbed them all. And before they could move the original did a quick series of hand seal water prison jutsu he yelled engulfing them all in water bubbles leave them alone you swine guy yelled at him running on the water with the man's sword in his hand and swinging it at him the sword suddenly fell from his hands revealing to have spikes in the handle that stabbed him the water bubbles that engulfed them filled with water preventing them from breathing niji knees and himawaris distressed cry echoed throughout the Plains as she moved closer to him he tried to tell her to stay back but couldn't talk due to the water filling his lungs Lee Niji 1010 guy yelled suddenly a large spike in killing intent drew Niji's attention to the sidelines where Himawari stood she looked at Niji with tears forming in the corners of her eyes but had a blank expression the killing intent was so intense it made him want to move back on instinct veins popped on both sides of her face her eyes going clear white the Byakugan. Powered by sheer anger she turned to look at the Akatsuki member who was watching her too curious she struck a pose Niji recognized very well her mouth moved but he couldn't hear what she had said he didn't need to though because he already knew lock on.